Our top story at 5.30, a look at a bold new approach that could make a big dent in our drought. Good evening, I'm Sarah Dachi. I'm Reed Cowan in for Ryan Yamamoto. You know, as water becomes more and more scarce, some farms say they may not survive. There is a new program now to return these lands to the wild. CBS reporter Adrian Moore takes a closer look. This withered and water-starved cornfield is a snapshot of some of the farmland of the future. And I always say we're a poster child for this issue because we're not doing it right. We're taking too much water out of the ground. Yeah, if you went out to... Out Michael to Hagman is the executive director of the Linmore Irrigation District. He also owns this 160-acre plot of fallowed ag land. Land he could soon be paid to take out of production under the multi-benefit land repurposing program controlled by the Department of Conservation. With those $10 million grants, regions can begin to collaboratively plan for how they want to repurpose land and begin to provide payments to farmers to voluntarily implement those repurposing projects on their properties. Among those types of repurposing projects is what some experts refer to as rewilding or restoring land to its native habitat. It's a bold approach that could make a big dent in the drought. Studies estimate that upwards of a million acres of farmland are going to come out of production in the next 20 years or so. While the idea of repurposing ag land is still taking shape here in Tulare County, it's already showing promise about 150 miles north with the largest floodplain restoration project in California at Dos Rios Ranch. But we've saved hundreds of thousands of gallons of water every single year. Growing this native vegetation in the Julie wild, Rentner is the president of the conservation organization River Partners, which bought this 2100 acre former dairy ranch outside of Modesto, where alfalfa and winter wheat was also grown and transformed it with thousands of native grasses, shrubs and trees. It conserves water. Um, by reducing how much evapotranspiration actually happens here, right? When you transfer uh, lands from kind of thirsty crops into more drought tolerant native plants. But this living lab, which sits at the confluence of the San Joaquin and Tuolumne rivers, goes beyond water conservation. The floodplains here act as a shock absorber for flooding. When snow melt is happening and water is gushing off of the mountains down here to the bottom of the valley, floodplains like this one act as a sponge and they just take all that flood water and they let it soak into the ground and so it can be used later in the dry times. After more than a decade of work and millions in funding, Dos Rios has also restored a booming ecosystem. That's essential. Back in Tulare County, Michael Hagman is embracing the shift, knowing it can ensure land viability for future generations. That was Adrian Moore reporting. The story is part of a special we've been working on with CBS News stations across California. It's called Parched California's Climate Crisis. This Thursday at 7 p.m., find out why this drought is unlike others, who is getting hit the hardest, and how you can